2D Zelda has been in a weird spot for the last decade or so. In the last 10 years, we've gotten one game, and that was a remake of a Game Boy game. If you want to be generous, maybe two with Cadence of Hyrule, but that wasn't developed by Nintendo, and it was more of a collaboration between Crypt of the Necrodancer and The Legend of Zelda. The last new 2D Zelda game we got was A Link Between Worlds, which was almost 11 years ago. And even then, that game was based on A Link to the Past, but was still its own game, of course. So if you want to be super technical, the last completely original 2D Zelda was Spirit Tracks on the DS in 2009. Yikes. Now, it's obvious that most of this is because the Zelda team has been focusing on the new open world style of Zelda games, like Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. We haven't gotten any new traditional 3D Zelda games either in the last 10 years, other than remakes and remasters, just like the 2D series. Zelda has evolved, so maybe the top-down 2D games just aren't a priority for Nintendo anymore. Maybe 2D Zelda is just dead. That is what I would have said until something huge happened yesterday. At the June Nintendo Direct, Nintendo unveiled The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom, a brand new 2D Zelda game that is pushing the series in a direction we've never seen before. This game is innovating 2D Zelda in the same way that Breath of the Wild did for 3D Zelda, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. What exactly is Echoes of Wisdom? When the trailer for this game was first playing and I realized that this was in fact a Zelda game, my original thought was that this was a remake of the Oracle games on Game Boy. I'll admit the only reason why I thought that was because of the art style with this game having the same toy-like look as the Link's Awakening remake on Switch. I haven't played either of the Oracle games though, so that's probably why my mind went there. However, that thought quickly left my mind when I saw Link sinking into a rift and Zelda emerging from the crystal to be this game's protagonist. Yep, for the first time in the series, Zelda is the main protagonist of a Zelda game. Zelda? No! So yeah, this is a brand new 2D Zelda game, and it stars Zelda. This is something people have been wanting for a long time, and I even remember rumors back when Tears of the Kingdom was revealed, and it wasn't even called Tears of the Kingdom yet. People were theorizing all about how you would be able to play as Zelda underground and aid Link in his quest above the surface, which... I'd still think is a really cool idea. We obviously know this wasn't the case though, as Zelda was actually sent back in time and had no playable role, unfortunately. But my point with all this is that people have been wanting a playable Zelda for a while now, so this was great to see. And just a little bit over a month before Echoes of Wisdom was announced, there was a tweet from Papa Genos, who is a semi-credible leaker, hinting at there being a new game where you play as Zelda. I remember seeing this when it was posted and thinking that it was a great idea, but it's something I didn't expect to see on Switch. I figured that if this rumor was real, it would be on the next console because this is a pretty huge deal. A playable Zelda is something we've never seen other than with the CDI game, but we don't talk about that one. But no, it's here on Switch and it's releasing in three months. Something you may be asking is how exactly this game works. If you don't play as Link and you don't fight with a sword, is this even a 2D Zelda game or is it something completely different? I would say it's kind of in the middle. The game is very much still a 2D Zelda game. You have all the usual enemies and puzzle solving, you're still in that top-down perspective, and it has the same art style as Link's Awakening, which obviously was a 2D Zelda game. However, the game differs in how Zelda plays. Instead of using different items and weapons to solve puzzles, Zelda uses the tri rod to make copies, or echoes as they're called in the game, of different objects around the world. You can use these objects to solve puzzles and fight enemies, and you can even make echoes of enemies to help fight for you. This means that every puzzle and combat encounter can be approached from dozens of different angles, which leaves them very open-ended. The game may not be what we're used to from 2D Zelda, but it seems to have the same essence and gameplay philosophy as previous games, just with a new gameplay system. I've seen some people concerned with the open-endedness of the puzzles and how much freedom the player has with the amount of tools available. We haven't seen the limits of how far you can push the game's systems. For instance, can you infinitely place tables or something and just get anywhere you want in the game? How will the echoes work in dungeons? Will you be limited to things you find in the dungeon itself? Are there even dungeons in the game? These are all very fair questions that I wish we got a clearer answer on in the trailer, but I'm not that worried. You have to keep in mind that Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom are the poster children for how to do open-ended puzzles right. So I know that this game is in good hands, and I'm sure they'll be able to strike a good balance between giving players a ton of freedom and limiting them to make sure you can't exploit the game too much. That comparison to Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom wasn't just to reassure fans that the next game is in good hands though. I think that the Zelda team's goal here is to transform the 2D Zelda series into something new, just like they did with 3D Zelda. And if you want to be super optimistic, 
optimistic. Maybe they could even expand on this game with sequels where you play as Zelda and turn this into the main 2D series. I wouldn't mind that. I'm probably looking too far into the future though. The fact that you can approach everything in this game from many different angles opens up so many opportunities for speedrunning, challenge runs, and in general just giving the game a lot of replay value. And that's something that I'll always love about certain games. It doesn't matter how big your map is or how bloated with quote unquote content your game is because I value replayability over all else. If I want to play a game more than once, that at least means something about how good I think it is. That doesn't necessarily mean that I want to play the game again immediately after I beat it, nor does it mean that if I don't want to play a game again, I think it's a bad game. I'm more talking about when I think about a game a while after I've beaten it and go, you know, I should play that game again sometime. To me, that's what makes video games magical and is a big reason why I love games with open-endedness and player freedom because it makes those repeat playthroughs more interesting. So to see 2D Zelda go in this kind of direction just makes me really happy. I'm excited to see what this game has in store for us and I just hope we get to see more of it before it releases in September. This game launches in three months. Is that not crazy? You'd think that the first 2D Zelda game in 11 years would have a longer reveal to release cycle, but no, we're already pretty close to the game launching. The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom is giving 2D Zelda the same kind of innovation Breath of the Wild gave the 3D series. And I think that's a big reason why we haven't seen a new 2D Zelda game in so long. The team probably just didn't know how to expand the series to be as robust as how 3D Zelda was evolving, so they didn't make a new game. They had some non-linearity with the link between worlds, but I don't think that's what 2D Zelda really needed. The series has always been about linearity, which makes a lot of sense because it's a top-down action puzzle game. So how do you evolve the series? Well, you give players more freedom and more options as to how to tackle that linear design to make it as interesting as a non-linear game would be. And this game is doing exactly that. Now, we don't know the structure of this game at all. For all I know, this could be an open world game where you can go wherever you want at any time, but that's not a bad thing either. I think what's important is giving players the freedom to craft their own adventure, and this game seems to be doing that more Marvelously. The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom is shaping up to be an amazing new entry in the Zelda series, and I could not be more excited. Wait, Echoes of Wisdom? Zelda has the Triforce of... Wisdom? H how did I just realize that-